So what I'm going to do in this lecture is walk you through how protein translocation works with a focus on uh, the signal recognition particle SRP and uh, SRP receptor and the protein translocation channel 661 and how all these pieces work together. But the first part in figuring that out is to understand how the uh, secreted protein begins to be made. And so this calls back to molecular biology. So I'm going to walk you through the first steps of protein translation because that's where SRP jumps in and hijacks the process and kind of begins targeting proteins to the ER. So, so to remember back to molecular biology or remember forward if you haven't taken molecular biology yet, what we start with is an mRNA that has a five prime end and a three prime end. And that RNA is recognized by the ribosome, which then begins to synthesize protein. So as the nascent protein begins to be synthesized, the first part of the nascent chain, which is the amino terminus, is for a secreted protein contains a signal sequence. So in the first 30 or so amino acids of the nascent peptide, what you'll see is an unusual set of sequences called the signal sequence that are ultimately recognized by SRP. And these 30 amino acids are often hydrophobic, or at least for the classic canonical signal sequence. So what happens is that once the nascent peptide begins to be synthesized, you have this, um, the very leading edge of it is this, has, contains the signal sequence that's recognized by SRP. And then SRP comes in, and SRP is a GTPase, and so it comes in loaded in the GTP bound form, recognizes the signal sequence, and also interacts with the ribosome. The result of SRP binding to both the ER signal sequence and the ribosome causes the ri causes translation to pause. It, I mean, it effectively stops it completely, but if you were to wait long enough, it would eventually start up again. But this pause allows time for the secreted protein to be targeted to the ER via SRP. And so this is really important because if there weren't the, if if this pause didn't exist, what you would see is that proteins that are destined for the ER would end up being made in the cytoplasm. And since the cytoplasm, for one of the problems is that the cytoplasm is reducing environment and a lot of the, pro the proteins in the ER are eventually secreted are stable in an oxidizing environment. What you'd end up with is a lot of misfolded proteins in the cell and that's incredibly toxic. And in fact, there's a whole set of diseases related to disruptions in protein folding, and this would be one way to get a huge amount of misfolded protein within the cytoplasm. Now, once translation's been paused, and you have this ribosome signal sequence SRP complex, it is now primed for interaction with the SRP receptor, which sits on the ER, and the SEC61 translocation channel, which is another transmembrane protein, and that's the actual gateway to get from the cytoplasm into the ER lumen. Now, one of the interesting things about SRP receptor is that, like SRP, it is also a GTP binding protein. So what you have are these two GTP aces. They're both enzymes capable of hydrolyzing GTP, and that hydrolysis plays a critical role later in the translocation process. So what happens is you have SRP receptor loaded with GTP, SRP loaded with GTP, the ribosome and the signal sequence, and those that generates a high affinity interaction that docks the SRP ribosome signal sequence complex to the surface of the ER and places it in proximity to the SEC61 translocation channel. So once the SRP signal sequence ribosome complex is docked to the ER via the SRP receptor, what you have is a set of concerted molecular rearrangements that allows translation to, uh, translocation to take place. So the first thing that happens, and you have to imagine these are not like one, two, three. These are all things that are being happening incredibly rapidly so that and, and they're tightly coordinated so that you don't end up going off pathway and creating a, a mess. 
So what happens is SRP hands off the ribosome to SEC61. So sec ribosome binds to SEC61. In the process of doing that, the ER signal sequence is threaded into the SEC61 translocation channel. And in fact, the signal sequence interacts with the side of that channel. Now, while that coordinated with that, what you also see is GTP hydrolysis, because after that handoff, what you are left with is a very tight interaction between SRP receptor that's loaded with GTP and SRP that's loaded with GTP. Now, when both those proteins or protein complexes hydrolyze GTP, that lowers their affinity and they disassociate. And this is a, this is a, a principle you see over and over again in cell biology that you'll get spontaneous binding of things and that what you actually use energy for most of the time is to promote disassembly. So in this case, what you're doing is you drive assembly, you do this molecular handoff, and then you hydrolyze GTP in order to break, uh, break apart the complex and then start the cycle all over again. So hydrolysis takes place, GTP is hydrolyzed, the two, uh, the receptor and SRP disassociate, and then the hydrolyzed GTP, which is GDP and inorganic phosphate, is then exchanged for fresh GTP. And then the recharged SRP GTP complex can go and find another ribosome. So now let's focus for a moment on the ribosome SEC61 signal sequence complex. So let's line everything up. And what you see is once that docking has taken place, the ribosome is no longer paused. So that means translation can kick up again and you start spooling the nascent peptide through the SEC61 channel. So the, the protein sequence, the peptide sequence, gets longer and longer as the, as the ribosome chugs along the mRNA, but it's being spooled through the channel. And as a result, it gets longer, longer, and longer, and eventually translation terminates. And what you have is, in this case, which is a very simple case, which is a, a soluble secreted protein, you know, a simple way of thinking about this would be like insulin, is now, uh, largely in the ER lumen with the signal sequence because it's hydrophobic, kind of tethering it in the membrane. So when you think about this, one of the interesting observations is, well, where did the, you know, moving something across the membrane, particularly if it's against a concentration gradient, requires a fair amount of energy. And if you've noticed, the only place we've used energy in an obvious way has been the hydrolysis of GTP to break apart the SRP, SRP receptor complex. So where does the energy come in order to concentrate proteins in the ER? And the interesting thing is the energy comes from protein synthesis. So as proteins are being translocated, the, the process of translation, you're capturing that addition of an additional amino acid and threading that through the channel. So it's, it's a very efficient process, but it's, it's also kind of cryptic in terms of the energy utilization is buried into, in some sense, you're capturing the energy that you're consuming in doing peptide synthesis. And so that's a really cool observation and it makes protein translocation into the ER distinct from a lot of the other protein targeting sequences, uh, protein targeting systems that uh, we often talk about in cell biology. So once protein synthesis has been completed, the ribosome disassociates, the, ER, the mRNA drifts away, and we're left with the signal sequence and the nascent peptide tethered to the ER, uh, to the ER membrane. And what ends up happening is that the SEC61 channel opens up like a clamshell and releases that protein sideways into the ER membrane. And then the SEC61 sec channel is now available for uh, docking with another ribosome SRP uh, signal sequence complex. So if this were a protein such as like human growth hormone or insulin, we would have this problem that the protein we eventually want, the hormone, the pro protein hormone we want to secrete eventually into the bloodstream is stuck tethered to the ER membrane. So 
How do we get that protein off of the ER membrane? And the trick is that ER signal sequence, the sequence that targeted the protein to the ER in the first place via SRP is cleaved off by a protein enzyme called signal peptidase. And as you might imagine, a signal peptidase cleaves off the signal sequence. So what you end up with is the soluble portion of the protein being dumped into the ER lumen and that small 30 amino acid signal sequence is stuck in the membrane. Now you might be wondering, well, what happens to that? And there's a whole set of mechanisms for dealing with those small peptides and eventually degrading and eliminating them. We're not gonna get into that in this course, but it's really interesting and it ties up with a, a whole set of other types of signaling pathways. But that soluble portion is now free to then uh, either remain in the ER if it's an ER resident protein or if it's something like insulin to then be transitioned from the ER into the Golgi and then ultimately out of the cell. And that's the first step in protein uh, in the secretory pathway and how you get proteins into the ER.